What's up everybody? In this video, I'm going to be showing you guys how you can get started in astro photography. Over the past few weeks, um, I've gotten a couple of messages on YouTube and uh, some of the astronomy forums and websites that I frequent uh, asking me about my particular setup and how I take my astro images. Now, if you're thinking about getting into astrophotography, um, it's definitely a very fun and rewarding experience, but it can also be very, very frustrating at times, and it can also get uh, very, very expensive. But uh, this particular method I'm going to show you is called afocal astrophotography. Uh, very suitable for beginners. I've been using this method uh, for the past few years. I'm still using it now, but it's definitely a cost-effective way and fairly simple um, method to get into astrophotography. All right, so what is a focal photography anyway? I mean, what, what's what's the big deal about it? Well, essentially, all it is is basically taking the camera and placing it up to the eyepiece so that the uh, the image in the eyepiece is being projected into the lens of the camera, and essentially the camera is uh, basically replacing your eye and allowing you to snap an image uh, with the camera. Like I said, it's a pretty, fairly simple way to get into astrophotography, very cost effective, um, and it's an excellent way for beginners to, to get their feet wet and experiment uh, before you move up to a more expensive uh, imaging setup. Alright, so at the most basic level, uh, the things that you will need for afocal astrophotography is simply your telescope and a camera. That's it. Um, basically, you're going to be taking pictures of uh, the moon, the planets, bright objects, objects that don't require a lot of exposure time, because uh, you're going to want to keep that camera as still as possible while you're snapping the picture. Um, and that's a good way to, to jump in right away, because if you have a telescope, um, you probably do have a digital camera laying somewhere around and you can uh, get started in it right away. Now if you want to start taking pictures of objects that uh, have a lower magnitude or are a bit dimmer than moon and planets, you're going to need another method of holding the camera up to the eyepiece because unfortunately um, to be able to shoot those objects you need a longer exposure time and we're just not capable of holding the camera steady enough uh, to keep blur and motion effects from being in the image. So in a case like that, you're going to need an adapter of some type to uh, pretty much uh, attach the camera directly to the eyepiece. And I have such an adapter like that here, which is what I pr pretty much use for my setup. Uh, it's called the Orion Steady Picks. Essentially it's just a bracket with a screw that attaches to uh, your eyepiece. It just clamps down. And then your camera is mounted on this uh, this tripod socket uh, screw here and then once your camera is mounted on this uh, adapter you can move the camera adjust its orientation to uh, perfectly center the camera over the eyepiece so you get the entire field of view in your image and you can adjust it uh, left and right you can also adjust it uh, in depth back and forth and then also um, you can adjust up and down that way you can get the, your, your camera directly over the eyepiece. And with this particular adapter, it also has the advantage of allowing you to actually swing the camera away from the eyepiece. I just turn this knob here and move the bracket away. And now um, it gives you the convenience to use your telescope as you would normally. You can look through the eyepiece. If you need to recenter the object that you're shooting uh, into the field of view in the center, you can do that. Then of course all you have to do is just swing the bracket back, lock it down, and you're good to go. Now when it comes to choosing a digital camera to use with your apical setup, you don't have to have the latest and greatest camera out there. Uh, if you look at some of my older videos where I showed deep space objects, the camera that I use for those is a uh, Canon uh, PowerShot A470. It's a quite old camera. I've had it for a few years now. Um, it served me pretty well, but now it's starting to get a little tired. Uh, the lens has got several scratches on it. I've got a lot of dead pixels, and my LCD screen is cracked now. So I went ahead the other day 
and pick up a new camera. This is the Canon PowerShot uh, A2300 and this particular model has been out for about a year now and um, I think it's 16 megapixels yes and um, I think I paid 75 bucks for it it's a very nice camera for what it is uh, excellent price and uh, like I said you don't have to spend a whole lot on, on a big uh, shiny clunky camera with all the bells and whistles you just don't need all that for this particular method now ideally you want a camera that's uh, small uh, thin lightweight uh, so you're not adding any extra weight to your telescope's mount and also you want to make sure that you get a camera with a lens that's approximate to the size of your eyepiece um, ideally you want it to be uh, about as big or a little bit smaller than your eyepiece you don't want a huge lens because if you have a huge lens hovering over your eyepiece um, you're not getting the full uh, fill of view within that camera uh, so you're, you're just wasting space So. This uh, little digital camera like this will do. Uh, most of them have an LCD screen in the back so you can, you know, see uh, what you're shooting. And uh, that's pretty much all you need to uh, get started in this. Alright, so here we are with the, uh, the equipment set up. We've got our bracket attached to the eyepiece. It's clamped down nice and tight. And of course we have our camera attached to the eyepiece with the uh, tripod socket screw. And we're ready to go. As I said, uh, this particular bracket, this uh, adapter, you can swing the camera away from the eyepiece and uh, take a look through it. If you need to recenter your object or if you're going to slew to a new one, uh, you get that back in the center of your field of view. You can swing this back and forward, lock it down, and you're you're ready to go. So it's a pretty good pretty good setup for the beginner to get into. It's cost effective. Uh, it is limited though. Uh, the problem is for one. Is this this camera? The, today's digital cameras are just not sensitive enough to capture a lot of the deep space objects. Um, also, uh, the sensors are in, inherited to uh, high amounts of noise, so the image quality is a little bit degraded. And you just don't have a lot of the functions of your higher end uh, digital SL SLR cameras. Uh, you don't have the full control over exposure times, shutter speeds. Um, ISO and all that stuff, but uh, for what it is, uh, it's definitely enough to get you started. Um, and another thing is, is once you start to develop your your methods and and kind of uh, gaining experience, you're going to outgrow this equipment uh, pretty fast and want to move on to to bigger and better things. But as I said before, it's a very very expensive hobby. Um, when you start talking about specialized uh, astrophotography cameras, CCD imagers, you're talking about thousands of dollars. Uh, in most cases, your, your camera alone will, will cost uh, more than your telescope and all of its accessories combined. But all right, well, so that's pretty much it for this video. Um, after my dog dialogue ends, I'm going to uh, have a slideshow of images that I've uh, taken with this particular camera. I've only had it for a few days now, so I haven't had a chance to kind of learn the ins and outs of it yet. But uh, so far, I'm pretty impressed with what it can do. And it'll give you an idea of what you can kind of expect with a digital camera using the afocal uh, method. But uh, So hopefully this gives you a little bit of insight on how you can get started. Uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to message me, and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. And uh, on another note, if you're planning on imaging... Uh, Comet Panstars in the next few days. This is definitely a good way to do that. It's a good setup to use. Um, but, alright, thanks for watching. Um, clear skies.